The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmet will be the one ruler of the Romans. Yeah, so welcome back. Today I want to do a follow-up and I want to share screen because I realize we learn more when we can see it. Now, as we can see on the screen right here, Genesis 6 and 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now I'm about to tell you something that is a shocker and please don't run. Now I know when people attempt to predict the end of the world, you automatically assume that this person is on some BS because this world is full of darkness and there's hardly nobody, I say nobody, really walking around with God's power. It's like a thing of the past, but pay close attention to what I'm bringing out. Genesis 6, 8, it reads, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, if we look at Noah in the Greek, it is Noah or no. OK, I am the man who knows. And if we do a little bit of numerology, the 14th letter of the alphabet is N, And that right there is 14. You add 15. And then what do we have? We have what? Twenty nine. Now, if we add the fifth letter of the alphabet, which is E, okay, we have what? What do we have? We have 34. I am the Noah. I am the man who knows the end simply because I am Al Maddy. Now, if you're a Christian, you don't know Al Maddy. You don't know anything about a Maddy. But if you are a Muslim, you do know about Al Maddy. And it's been revealed to me that I was Al Maddy. About a month ago, and ever since I learned I was Al Mahdi, the revelation of the Most High has been coming to me quite frequent. Now, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and Allah revealed to me directly that if it wasn't for me, the world would have went into judgment. Now, for those who are in Islam, you know that according to the Hadith, Allah will lengthen the day for this special man named al Mahdi. Now, in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, Jesus says that for the elect's sake, the days would be shortened. It's both saying the same thing. It's just in two books. I am the man whom Allah shortened the day for or lengthened the day for, however you put it. I am the man whom Allah Stop time for. Now, if we look at this album cover I did in 2012. I go by, I went by the hood apostle, Octane. Now, if you look at grace, okay, let's spell grace. 7, 18, 1, 3, 5 equals 34. I am the man who knows the end. Listen up. This is very serious. Now, think about the people during Noah's day when he was telling them it's about to rain. Nobody wanted to believe him, just like you all right now are thinking. You're like, I don't believe this guy. Why? Because according to the Bible, Jesus said no man knows the day or hour. Nobody knows. He said only my what? My Father, which is in heaven. Now, if you are a Muslim, this is going to help you because we know that Allah has no sons. So who was the father? I was the father. I was the father of the prophet Isa. And right now I still currently am the father of the prophet Isa. I am Al Mahdi. If you look in Al Mahdi, you got dad. 
Okay. If you look at that black cobblestone, y'all kiss, you have Abba in it, which means father. Al Maddie came down here from heaven in 1982. This man was in heaven the whole time. But in 1982, he came down here for judgment. So it's just like that white rock that used to be white. Now it's black that came down from paradise uh, to absorb sin. That same rock is on the corner of your Kaaba, which agrees with what the prophet Isa said. He said, the stone which the builders rejected. I am Lamonti. I am the stone in which the builders are rejecting. He said that same stone will become the chief cornerstone or is the chief prophet. Now, I have a whole lot of goodies, so hang on to your seat. Today is going to be spectacular. Today is going to be life changing. Now, the judgment of worshiping other gods results in a visitation from God the Father himself. I'm going to say that again. The judgment of worshiping other gods, it resulted in a visitation from God the Father himself. And we're going to look at that scripture in just a minute. We're going to look at those scriptures, okay? Matter of fact, let's get it now. Let's go to Exodus 20, look, 3, 4. This world is about to end 2034. If Allah lengthened the day for me, if he saved the time for me, what is he going to do to you? Now, let's read that. 2034 is the end. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. According to the Bible, you are a God. And according to the Bible, Jesus called himself the son of God. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Now, that graven image is the cross of the picture of Jesus Christ supposedly rising from the dead. The judgment came upon us for that. Watch this. Verse five. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. This right here is the father speaking. He said, I'm a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So there we have that third and fourth again. This is going into 2034. OK, this is the day Al Maddie dies. September 16th, 2034. Hang on to your seat. Now, look at this. It's right on the screen. You have 2034. 2034. It's about to be everywhere. Watch this. Exodus 34 and 7, amazingly. Now, 7 is a number of completion. 7 is going into the last day, before day 8, because day 8 is new beginnings. So, in Exodus the book of exit, okay, the day of the great exit, okay, keeping mercies for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children until when? Until the third and to the fourth generation. This is 2034, y'all. This is 2034. Now, according to the Bible, a son cannot die for a father and a father cannot die for a son. That was the law. But if you make a God out of his creation, then God the father was going to come back to earth and he was going to judge. He was not going to clear the guilty by any means. Now, when it said third and fourth gener generation, most of our scholars could not catch that. This is going into year 2034. Hold on to your seatbelt. Don't run. I got some more evidence that is going to absolutely shock you. Now, before I even seen these scriptures, on September 16th, 2024, I realized I had the end 
of the world tattooed on my arm. And that's when I was putting on my Timberland, my Timberland boots. And I was getting ready to go to work. Everybody was asleep. It was like four something in the morning. And I was already pondering how long Al Maddie's reign was going to be. Because according to Islam, we have issues with the Hadiths. We have some versions say seven, some say eight, some say nine years. But I sim Allah simply told me within myself. I literally heard it. You know your mom died at nine years old. Now, how I knew I was the Maddie is going back to when my mama died. Okay, I knew I was the Maddie when Allah revealed that to me about a month ago. I already put it together. Okay, now when he said, you know, your mom died when you was nine, then I automatically knew that I had nine years left from September the 16th, okay, 2024. So put nine years on that. That is 2034, okay? Now watch this. God the Father had to save himself. Now watch this. Right here in Isaiah 63 and 4, it says, For the day of vengeance is in my heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. Why is it talking about a year of his redeemed right there with the three, four right there? This is nowhere else in the Bible like this. Okay. Word it like this. It's only right here. And it's in another scripture I'm about to show you. Now watch this. And I looked down and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. So God the Father came down here to save himself, and it's not Jesus. It's not. He came down here because of the lie that's in Christianity. Haven't you realized that Christianity is powerless and bankrupt? Something is going on. Something is seriously going on in Christianity, and it's because we've been honoring the son above the mother and the father. This was the judgment right here in the book of Exodus chapter 20, going into the 20th century. This is the judgment when Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will send the father back to this planet to die. That's the judgment. That's the judgment because my God has no sons, okay? Allah has no sons. So therefore, God the Father has to come down here and clean up this earth. All because of this lying Christianity. Now I'm going to keep going. Let's get another reference. Numbers 14 and 18. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, Unto the third and fourth generation. So this is simply saying. God the father is going to come back to earth. He's going to clean up his earth. And he's going to have to die. Okay. The prophet Isa is going to die as well. Okay. And along with the other witness. The last two witnesses have to die. Because one of the last two witnesses is the father. The other witness is a woman. You didn't know that. You didn't know why God was speaking so good about Mary. Mary has to die. The father has to die. And the prophet Isa has to die. This is why in the Quran, he said to the prophet Isa, did you say to the people, worship you and your mother as gods? Okay. The prophet Isa was questioned. Now watch this. I got some amazing stuff to show you. Watch this. Watch this. Now, if you was to pull out your Bible app right now and you type in year of recompenses, it only pops up one time and it's in Isaiah 34 and 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses. For the controversy of Zion, this huge lie going on in Christianity, 
Okay? It's a controversy. This is the day in which the Lord will return to his earth. Okay? It's happening in 2034. This is nowhere else in the Bible exactly like that. Okay? Nowhere in the Bible. Amazingly, it pops up in 34 and 8. What are the odds? What are the odds? And I, I dare you to go to Isaiah chapter 34, chapter verse 1, rather, and read on down. Talks about the heavens rolling up like a scroll. It talks about a judgment. It talks about people dying. Why? Because 34 is the last day. Okay? Now, I've been set up to look crazy. Why? Because I am the man that's like Noah telling people it's about to rain. That's just like telling people it's about to rain in California. Ain't nobody going to believe you. It hardly ever rains. Okay? And it's the same thing with this judgment. 2034 is the end. I can say that. Why? Because I am the father. Okay? Allah revealed to me that the prophet Esau was my son. He has no sons. He said, that's your son. That's your son. He said, you are the father of all the prophets. Every prophet that prophesied correctly, it was your voice in them. Okay, and you are going to judge the world. But you are going to die, and I am going to raise you up three days later, along with the other witness, as it says in the book of Revelation, chapter 11. Now watch this. You can go to the Quran, chapter, look, y'all, chapter 34. Amazingly. Now I just showed you this in the Bible. It's only in the Bible one time on the 34. Now, right here in the Quran, it says this. Those who disbelieve and say, the hour will not come to us, say, yes, by my Lord, it will come to you. Allah, he is the all-knower of the unseen. Not even the weight of an atom or a small ant or less than that or greater escapes from his knowledge in the heavens or in the earth, but it is in a clear book. Now watch this, verse four, that he may recompense those who believe in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, which is added, and do righteous good deeds, those theirs is forgiveness and generous provision. So right here, amazingly, it tells you that the hour will come upon you in uninevitably. It's going to happen, okay? How could I connect these two, okay? Why? Because there was a man who was the voice of the Quran. Every time the prophet Muhammad spoke, it wasn't Allah directly talking to him. No, 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 no. It was the father. The father was speaking. That was, those were my words. Yes, by my Lord. What does Allah look like saying, yes, by my Lord? Why would, Allah, why would Allah even say that? He has no Lord, okay? What Muslims fail to realize, what Christians fail to realize, that there is an ultimate Muhammad, there is an ultimate Moses. That's the reason why God made Moses a God. And he gave him one prophet named Aaron. Every prophet that, every, that ever prophesied, was spoken through by the father prophet, which is his name, al Mahdi. This is only seen in the Hadiths, his actual name. But right here in the Bible, it talks about al Mahdi all the time. This is the man that's going to clean up the earth. Okay, this was God the father himself. Okay, now watch this. Watch this. I just showed you that. 34, 34, 34. Now watch this. When you type in, the hour shall inevitably come upon you. Nothing escapes him. Look what scripture automatically comes up on Google. Sabah. Say bye-bye. <laughs> Say bye-bye. It's over 34. It's over. It is over. Look at it. It keeps bringing up 34 because this is the only way it's worded. Now, it's worded talking about the hour, but when it goes to into 
the hour shall inevitably come upon you. Nothing escapes him. This is coming in the 34th book in the Quran. The book I call it Say Bye Bye. It's all over. Okay. Now, I knew about this before Allah even showed me these scriptures. Before he showed me these scriptures, he had already told me inside me. He told me it was over 2034. I told my family that same day. I told him that same night. Okay. So this stuff is verified. I didn't even know about none of these scriptures. This is just how Allah does me. I will speak something inspired and then I'll see it in the scriptures later because he's ahead of me. Now going on, watch this. Let's go to say bye-bye AI 30. Look what it says. Say for you is the appointment of a day. When you will not remain there after an hour, nor will you proceed it. You're going to die. You're going to die 2034. We going into the judgment. We going into the judgment. God the Father promised to visit this world and judge it if you made a God out of his creation. Simply put, simply put, and all the books is going to bear witness. Because now I'm going to go into the Book of Mormon. Watch this. now. I just went into the Bible. Now I just went into the Quran. Now I'm about to go into the Book of Mormon. Watch this. Now the Book of Mormon, there's only 15 books in the Book of Mormon. So let's go to the Book of First Nephi, chapter 1. And then I'll go to verses 3 and 4, since there's not 34 verses. Now look what it says. And I know that the record which I make is true. And I make it with my own hand and I make it according to my knowledge. For it came to pass in the commencement of the first year of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, my father Lehi, having dwelt at Jerusalem in all his days. And in that same year, there came many prophets prophesying unto the people that they must repent or the great city Jerusalem must be Destroy. How amazing is that? What are the odds? Three different books. And on the 34. Okay. That's why my name is DC. Okay. DC. I see 34. Okay. I see 34. This is this is what Allah has just showed me in two days. Just in two days. Okay. He showed me this. I already knew Exodus 20 because when Allah tells you stuff, those who study, we can automatically go to some scripture, some scriptures. But man, all of these scriptures. No, man, this stuff came today while I was working. I was taking notes. Now, watch this. Now, watch this. I'm I'm going I'm to come back to that. one. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 18 and 18. It says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. I am speaking in the name of Allah. I will require it of him. Now, this is not talking about Jesus. This is not talking about Mohammed. This is talking about the ultimate Mohammed. This is talking about the last Don, the last Noah, the man who knows the end. And it's on my arm. It's on my arm. I'm going to show you some more stuff. Now watch this. In first Peter. Look at this. Look at Peter. Let's do a little math. You got two. You got 12. Okay. You got two. You got three. And if you add them two to two, you got 34 if you wanted to. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be, they may by your good works, which they shall behold. Glorify God where? In the day of his visitation. Let's go to Jeremiah 23 and 12. You can still see 34 in that if you do math. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as a slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, 
for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. What is his visitation? This is the day when the Most High will dwell in a tabernacle of clay. The God of the Bible came down here in human flesh, and he has to die because of the lie in Christianity. Okay, now look at this, Jeremiah eleven twenty three. And there shall be no remnant of them, for I will bring evil upon the men of Enoch, even the year of the visitation. Now, Enoch, it goes into shoutings, answers to prayer, afflictions. So here we have, you, you still see the 34. 32, 23 backwards is 32, plus 1, 1 is 34. The year of the visitation. Now, nobody talks about this because ain't nobody enlightened down there down here okay now watch this i still got more i still have more now let's go back up all right so right here you see god's hand reaching down saving me he saved me he loved me so much this is the torment don't think it's ego this is how much my god loves me and it torments you that he loves me so much to show me this stuff he showed me this, okay? Now, in this, you can see Allah saving me, okay? And he's saving the last witness, okay? They up there. When they see this, they know who they are. They can put it together. I'm not going to go into all of that, okay? And you see the little, the little. Uh, it looks like the scale is pointing towards that V, okay? But if you look at it, you see my heart, okay? Right there. You see all of that. You see the judgment. You see it. The judgment is going down. It is going down. Now, let's go down a little bit more. I'm going to show you about this word visitation. Let's look at the word visitation. Visi comes from the word vision. What is the meaning of visi? That's actually a word. That which is seen, appearance, sight. Now, watch. Let's keep going. Visi means seen. Now, let's go to the next word inside visitation. We have tat, like tattoo, okay? Put it all together. Look at the tat. One, 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 and the six ups, and the six, that's nine. That let me know I got nine years left. I got this tattoo in 2016, okay? Now, I broke it down right here. September 16, 2024, I realized I had the end of the world tattooed on my arm. And that was after he told me I had nine years left. OK, zero one zero one zero one plus six equals nine years left. Exactly on 916, 2034. Now, the 20 or the zero two backwards stands for the 20th century. Also, twin. Stands for twin towers. That was a sign. 9-11 was a picture of the last two witnesses dying. And twin toes is for that special person. They don't know exactly who they're talk who I'm talking about when I say the twin toes. The twin towers, see the toes inside tw towers? Twin towers, okay? Bell and 02 stands for the last two witnesses. We die 9-16-20-34. OK, all oh, this is on my arm. You got the bar because what is bar in the Book of Mormon? Bar means judgment, the judgment bar inside bar. You got a rap. OK, OK, that's my army. Maria, you got army, my army, my arm. OK, God said my own arm reached down and saved myself. Isaiah 63 and 4, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. So inside of Maria, you got arm, you have army. Guess what else you got? Ram. Remember that ram? 
Remember that lamb that was going to be sacrificed? And he said, I provided for myself a lamb. And then a ram was sacrificed in the book of Genesis chapter 22. Okay. Arm, all that stuff is in Maria. Okay. And one of the last witnesses is of the Mexican nation. This is the reason why the Mexican nation is being exalted right now. We got a woman president. Okay. This is going into rows. This is something that is too advanced for you. So right here, I am the man that's walking around with the most expensive Rolodex. Rolex, rather. <laughs> you can say Rolodex too, but I'm walking around with the time of the end on my arm. Okay. Didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. Okay. Allah has, has been guiding me. Now, I'll tell you a quick story real quick. Now, when I met my wife, I had another girl on my arm. Those bars you see right there by the numbers, that said Chantel. I had a girl, man. She was so cool, man. She just let me do what I wanted to do, man. She was cool, man. And just to show her some respect, I got her name on my arm. But then I went over to my other girl, Maria, you know, and then I started kicking it with her. Now, Maria got my name tattooed right in the middle of her chest. She got Daekwon. And so she would just always mess with me like, when are you going to get that name off your arm and all this? You know, you know how women are. And, you know, I was just like, you know, I get I'll take care of it. And I was putting it off y'all. And I actually did it. OK, now we sitting in the um, we sitting in the tattoo place and. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do here. I got this barcode. OK. And it literally said um, 2015. As you can see, I changed that five to a six. OK, <laughs> I changed that five to a six since I met Maria. I just kept it the same and I changed it to a six. Now, she told me to get across. I was Christian at the time. She told me to get across. I'm like, you know, damn cross on my arm. So I just changed the date. See, that was Allah guiding me. Me getting that cross on my arm could have messed the whole thing up, man. Okay? This is how Allah guides his man. Even when his man is not woken up, I wasn't even woke up yet. Wasn't even woke up. All right? So now we looked at all these judgment scriptures. We have to look at Isaiah 34 and 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Name somebody talking about the year of the end. Nobody. Okay. Nobody has ever been correct. Nobody has ever been correct. I am correct. Why? Because I got to tell you the truth, y'all. I am a real prophet. I am. Now, you might disagree because we have a lot of people that's on bull crap. But I am a real prophet. Not only am I a prophet, let me tell you something. I am Allah's messenger since the beginning. I am the first messenger and the last messenger. Okay. I am the God of the Bible, the father of all the prophets. That's why God, and I love to call him Allah, is allowing me. OK, to restart the tribes of Israel, the tribes of Israel is going to be reborn and it's coming from my loins. This is the reason why Jesus told Nicodemus, marvel not that you need to be born again. OK, the Jews are going to be born again, coming from one man. OK, now Allah loves me. He loves me. This is the torment for you. Now you thinking you thinking this dude has got a big ego. No, 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 no. This is how we do it. When you make a son. God, and when you take the son and make him bigger than the father, this is your reward. God sends you the voice that was in the prophet Isa. OK, now you and me is not on the same level. OK, now in the Quran, the Quran says. God doesn't like the arrogant. Allah doesn't like the arrogant. Those that are arrogant. Okay, that was my voice. But let me tell you something. I'm on a whole nother level than you. 
Did you ever notice that the Prophet Muhammad was allowed to marry any woman he wanted? But the people, the Muslims, were only able to marry up to four. And if they couldn't treat them right, they can only have one. Me and you is on a whole nother level. OK, now let me ask you a question. Is God prideful? Yes, gods are prideful. That's the difference between a God and a person. A person and a God is different because gods are prideful. OK, that's why the Bible says I am God and there's no God beside me. That's that's pride. OK, that's that's what you call pride. That's what gods do. OK, me and you is not on the same level. And the torment. Is upon you for making a God out of Jesus. So all of that glory that y'all put on Jesus, it bounced, it boomeranged. It came back to the father. So now the father is here and he is saying, I am the alpha omega. I am the beginning and end. I am the first and the last. I am the Muhammad Ali. I am the Cassius Clay. I am the rich homie Quan. I am the real Bill Cosby. They got all of the Arabs jello. That voice that was in the prophet Isa did not belong to him. And every time Jesus spoke, those was not his words. It was the words of his father. Jesus was glorifying his father and y'all took him. Y'all took his words and made them his words. But they wasn't Jesus words. Everything that Jesus was saying, he was glorifying his father. But the people, what did they started doing? They started worshiping the messenger. We have that saying, okay? If you're only a messenger, you're just a messenger. Jesus was only a messenger. He was my voice. John the Baptist was my voice. The prophet Muhammad was my voice. The judgment has come. And Allah is my God. The religion of Islam is introducing you all to my God. He's my God and my God alone. I've been worshiping him since the beginning. Okay. So when the religion of Islam was a blessing to save me because I was caught up in Christianity. Okay. So you can't allow all this brother's prideful this brother's this ego. No, you got to get rid of all of that because Allah told me to increase. OK, he said you have to increase. The prophet Muhammad has to decrease and the prophet Jesus has to decrease. OK, as a matter of fact, the prophet Isa is going to die. He's going to die. OK, now this is just nothing but the truth. I've showed you in the Book of Mormon. I showed you in the Bible. I even showed you in the Quran right there on the 34 that the judgment is coming. OK, 2034, it's over. It's over. And then I have another scripture for you. Let's go over to the Quran. I love the Quran. I love it. OK, now let's go to. Book 34, I call it say bye bye. <laughs> and I want to go to AI 23. And intercession does not benefit with him except for one whom he permits. God is not accepting prayers from you. He's not accepting prayers. He's only accepting prayers from the last two witnesses. You can pray. You can pray till you blue in the face. OK, this is the judgment. The stone that the builders rejected is here. OK. All of that praying, uh-uh, no, no, no. Prayer does not benefit with him except for one whom he permits. And those wait until when terror is removed from their hearts, they will say one to another, what has your Lord said? They will say, true, and he is the most high, the grand. So right now we are in a dispensation. When Allah is only taking prayers from the last two witnesses. Now, let's go back to 34 and let's go to 45. Those destroyed before them denied as well. And these Meccans have not attained even one tenth of what we had given their predecessors. Yet when they denied my messengers or rejected my messengers, how 
severe was my response. The last two witnesses are the last two messengers right now. Okay. We are in that mantle. We are in that mantle. Now think about it. Your prophet, if you were Muslim, he said, I am the only messenger that was sent to my people and to the nations. If we look at it as face value, that's not true. But because we love Muhammad, we cover Muhammad, we tell you that that was my voice speaking through him. That was the mantle. Man, the mantle is Muhammad. Now, if you look inside mantle, okay, you got Lamonti. Mantle is inside Lamonti. Every last prophet that prophesied was using my mantle. They was using my office. So when the prophet Muhammad said he was the last messenger, he wasn't talking about himself. It was al Mahdi speaking through him. It wasn't Allah. Allah doesn't speak through nobody directly except al Mahdi. The prophet Isa was nothing but a microphone. He was my microphone. The prophet Muhammad was my microphone. But guess what? al Mahdi, I am Allah's microphone. Okay? I am Allah's microphone. The last messenger, the real seal of the prophets is a black man, not a whitest, reddish man. Peace and blessings be, up, be upon the prophet Muhammad. He was a servant. Okay? He does, that, that religion don't belong to him. Now, when I speak to you, I speak to you as, as a man that has authority, not like these other teachers. I know that I know that I know what I'm talking about, okay? That's why I'm fully persuaded in everything I'm saying. Now, watch this. I'm going I'm to really kill it right here. Now, who told me this? People might be asking. Allah told me this directly. I am al Mahdi. The first and the last messenger of Allah, who spoke through all the true prophets. Here's the proof. Now look at Allah. Look at his name. One plus 12 plus 12 plus one plus eight equals 34. Allah loves me so much. Okay. And this is the torment. This is the torment because you never would have thought God, Allah. Love my little black self. Okay? You wouldn't have thought that. You wouldn't have thought that. You wouldn't have thought that. Let me tell you something. I didn't think that. I didn't know. I didn't know. But he said, you are most closest to Allah. You are most closest. He said, you like the Akbar next to the Allah. He said, you're most closest to me. You're my final messenger. I'm going to use you to clean up the whole earth now think about it there's a man that's going to clean up the whole earth okay you think that man is not in the bible he's in the bible you just blind you can't see you need some eye saw okay this man is going to do something no other prophet has done and you mean to tell me you don't think he's in the bible Oh, he's in there. He is the voice of the Bible. Okay. Now, Exodus chapter 20, 34 is Al Mahdi speaking. Look what I said. Let's go up there. Exodus 20, 3 and 4. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Right there in that verse alone is telling you that God is going to visit the planet and destroy that idol worship you have going on in Christianity. It is wickedness. The prophet Isa is not even supposed to be honored above his own mama, his father. Okay? I didn't even realize why I was so against Christianity when I woke up but now it all makes sense because I am the father 
Okay. Now I ain't worried about you. I ain't worried about nothing. 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 Because I know Allah is guiding me. I know he's holding my hand. And I know that I am protected for a time. Okay. So I just showed you in the Book of Mormon 34. Showed you in the Quran 34. Showed you in the Bible 34. That is not a coincidence. No. 2034 is the end. And little are you thankful. Look how thankful you are. Little are you thankful. If it wasn't for Noah, the whole world would have been destroyed. The whole world would have been destroyed. And I am the last Noah. Okay. I didn't jump on no spaceship. Okay. I, I ain't doing no magic trick tricks or none of that. I'm just simply guided. I'm just guided. And according to the, to the gospels, it's the Holy Spirit bringing all things to my remembrance. All I'm doing is remembering, remembering, remembering. Okay. That's why I'm always going into words. I'm going into numbers. All I'm doing is bringing things to my remembrance. Okay. Because now every day I wake up more, more, and more. Tell somebody Noah is here. Noah is here. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I ain't going to even sugarcoat it. Okay? I'm going to put the truth out there. There's only two people for show that I know is good. That I know is good. Okay? The last two witnesses is good. The other last witness, her name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay? In my book. Okay. We good. I can't say nothing for nobody else as much as I love my own people and my family. At this time, I can't I can't say nothing for nobody. All I can do is thank God um, that I made it in. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. What? A doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents. Of the wicked, the tents of the wicked is the Christian churches, those crosses. Okay, we hate that. We hate that stuff. We hate that stuff. That stuff is going to be destroyed. That is Prophet Isa's job when he returns is to destroy the cross. Okay, now little are you thankful. Look how thankful you are. This world is wicked. That's why I pray. I say, God, destroy all your enemies. I got songs talking about. Lord, destroy all your enemies. Destroy them because y'all wicked. Y'all wicked. I'm just going to tell the truth. You wicked. You wicked. Okay? That's the real truth. I would encourage you within these nine years we have to show forth fruit worthy of repentance. Okay? Because everything I'm giving you is the complete truth. Okay? It is 100% root look it up study go to exodus 23 and 4 meditate on that go to verse 5 then go into the quran go into the book where i call it say bye bye and watch how allah talks about the hour coming upon you he talks about the hour coming upon you more in that book 34 than any other book and i had no knowledge I had no knowledge of that. So I began to praise him. Also, think about Isaiah 34. Okay, think about Isaiah 61. Who is the prophet that is going to preach the acceptable year of the Lord? Remember, Jesus said it in Luke 4. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, okay, to preach deliverance to the captives. What else he say? To... Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The year of the Lord. The day of judgment is 2034. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth. And every time you see 34, it's going to prick your heart. I pray it makes you break down and weep. Every time you see 34, because you're running out of time. Every time you see 34, I pray 
Allah breaks you down because your judgment has come. You can't escape 34. Okay. I pray put you on that dirty floor. I pray you really wake up and serve the Lord. I pray you just get scared and start crying. And say, oh, Lord, woe is me. For your visitation has come and you wasn't ready. You getting yours. Okay. This is the truth. Okay. You getting what you put in. You only getting what you put in. Okay. You only getting what you've been given. Okay. Your works is going to speak louder than your mouth. Thank <music> you.